Hi, I'm Jill Ewer, editor of FCA's Sharing the Victory magazine, and today we're coming to you from Connecticut, which has been the site of some pretty major college basketball this year. Now, who better to talk to about major college basketball than a woman who has spent time on its largest stage as a member of the University of Tennessee women's basketball team. It was Kara Lawson, who's now a member of the WNBA's Connecticut Sun. We sat down with Lawson to talk about that college basketball experience and the faith that has driven her along the way. Can you just describe for me what it was like to be a Lady Vol? A, a great experience to have the opportunity to play at the University of Tennessee for you know, Coach Summit, who's a legend, who um, I was like a lot of young girls uh, in this country that grow up and, and want to have an opportunity to play college basketball at the highest level. And as I got into high school, I uh, started to kind of hone in on different schools and uh, Tennessee certainly caught my eye. Um, I loved her intensity, I loved her passion, um, I loved her ability to uh, push her players uh, to the limit. And uh, I was um, the type of player, I'm still the type of player that, that wants to compete against the best. Um, I just place great value in, in competition and what it can teach you and, and what you can gain from it and uh, I knew going there that uh, there would be a great deal of competition in practice and also uh, the schedule and, and the games that we played. So um, it was a, a great atmosphere and at a, at a university that really values women's basketball and women's sports, uh, which is important too, um, to be able to play in front of 20,000 uh, people is not something that a lot of uh, women's college basketball players get the opportunity to do. You've experienced something that's like pretty unique among women's sports with that kind of following. Um, was there ever any like added pressure um, playing on that kind of stage? I think the biggest adjustment when you go to a school like Tennessee uh, is the spotlight, is the fact that people in the city of Knoxville that are across the state of Tennessee that are huge UT fans. Uh, you get recognized everywhere. Uh, people know who you are, students in your classes, your professors. Um, going to the grocery store, you get stopped at every, in every aisle, um, asked about the game or this upcoming season or someone's injury or whatever. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's something that, uh, that took some getting used to. But uh, I was fortunate enough to, to have a great foundation um, from, from my parents um, that kind of instilled in me at an early age that um, there's always people watching you. There's always um, somebody that you might not know who they are or know that they're there. Um, that is um, watching how you behave, watching how you conduct yourself, watching how you perform. And so to always um, you know, understand that and, and try to be uh, somebody, or try to do things that you would want people to aspire to do. Can you just tell me how you first came to know the Lord? Uh, well, I grew up going to church you know, um, every Sunday um, with my family, my sisters. Um, but, you know, I think everybody um, at some point uh, has that, uh, that time in their life where they realize, you know, they uh, need to depend on, on God uh, more than maybe they have or um, start to feel uh, His presence uh, a little bit more. Uh, for, me, for me, it was college because uh, that's a time when you're out on your own, you're away from your family. And, you know, the, the foundation that they've given you, um, some of it is, is taken away because you're no longer with them on, on a daily basis. And so you don't have as many opportunities to bounce questions off of them, get advice. Um, you're not in your comfort zone anymore. Can you tell me some of the main things that God taught you while you were at Tennessee? When you get to college, um, it's a struggle. I mean, you're classes and practices and study halls and training room and weight room and there's so many things going on and then you add to that um, the pressure you have to perform as an athlete and the pressure you put on yourself to to do well you want to compete and you want to have success and so there's not a lot of time where there's quiet or there's an opportunity for your mind uh, to be still and anyone that knows me knows that um, it's hard when it's quiet and it's still, for me to be still. I, I just am active and I like to do things all the time. So um, learning to be able to slow down, 
learning to train my mind uh, to be still mm -hmm. and to focus my thoughts. I think that was probably uh, the biggest lesson that I learned in college. And in those moments that you're able to, to find that stillness, whether it's in your car or walking to class, um, I, uh, I, gr I gained uh, great, uh, just a great peace in having those moments and understanding that they're not gonna come all the time in my room with the light turned off, you know, to yeah. fail to find um, moments of stillness in the midst of, of chaos. And I think that's very, very, uh, very important. What are some practical things that you would encourage college athletes to do themselves um, based on your own experience and how to, how to successfully navigate college as a, as a Christian athlete? I think it's very important that you have people that you can talk to, um, that you can, uh, that can mentor you or that are even uh, at similar points um, in their relationship with God because uh, you, you want to continue to have growth. Um, and a lot of times when, when we're busy, we become stagnant in, in where we are. So you are stagnant in your walk, you're stagnant in your job or in your sport, mm -hmm. and, and you can kind of just stay there mm -hmm. and, and not progress. And so uh, from, from the spiritual side, if you are growing, if you are surrounded by people that um, are helping you grow and that are challenging you in that area, um, I, th I think sometimes you know, as an at, as not as an athlete, but as Christians, you think of um, sports as oh, it's or I'm sorry, not sports, but your faith is like oh, it's it's nice and it's peaceful and it's still and it's this and that. And the reality is, it is is um, in sports, you have to challenge yourself to improve. Mm -hmm. You have to play against better people. You have to work harder than people. Um, you have to endure pain. Um, in order to to match your potential, mm -hmm. and so the reality of all that is that's the same thing spiritually. It's not nice all the time, mm -hmm. you know. You, you have to endure pain. Uh, you have to ch be challenged. Um, maybe someone looking out for you and stepping up and challenging you and saying like, "Hey, you know, um, have you thought about this?" Uh, and so I think sometimes it's it's not all supposed to be nice. It's supposed to, you're supposed to challenge yourself. You're supposed to. Uh, endure pain at times and and when you do that that's when you reach your full potential that's when you um, can see and you can kind of bear all the fruit of of what your spirituality is supposed to be and so sometimes when you're younger um, you want it all to be nice and when it's not you can't understand it and you're frustrated by it and so because you're frustrated by it you become stagnant because you're like well this isn't really working for me it's not working for me. And, um, you know, in reality, that's, it is working. You, you just have to, to get to the other side of it. And you hear the, the men's pro athlete side more often. You hear, you know, like the, the women, the money, all that stuff. What are some of the most common pitfalls for women? Because we handle things differently. Well, you know, the money is obviously a different, different scale. So it's not, uh, it's not at the same level. Mm -hmm. um, but there are still, to some extent, you have... Uh, people that want to be associated with you mm -hmm. that uh, you m might not know or you may kind of know but you don't know their true intentions and you know most people do know who you are uh, and so they um, you know you, you never know why people are asking for something or what what ultimately they want to ask ask you for um, so I think trust is very hard. I think it's very hard in general, yeah. r regardless um, whether you're a professional athlete or not. But uh, w when you are a professional athlete, the concept of trust and to be able to um, give that, you know, give give your trust or have trust in something or someone, mm -hmm. is uh, it's, that's something that gets I think exponentially more difficult as as we get older, probably. Uh, also, because when you're a kid, you trust very easily, right? By nature, as, sure. a, as a child, you do because you, you haven't been burned and you don't know what that feels like and, and you, you believe in, in the good of all people. And as you get older and you experience some of that pain that we talked about, 
uh, then it gets harder, you know, for you to trust. And so I think that's a challenge for, for professional athletes of who to trust, what to trust. Mm -hmm. um, th those are those are probably the biggest challenges. How has how has God met that need and filled that um, or met that challenge in your life? When you feel like you have the ability to trust nothing, um, it's it's very uh, it's, it's desperate, you know. It's it's desperate. It's um, you feel empty because you have nothing that you can that you can hold on to. When you have the ability to trust in something, it um, it fills you up. I mean, it, it gives you great confidence. It gives you um, a fearlessness. Um, and you, your whole approach of life is different when you can trust something. Um, and so for me, in my relationship with God, knowing that I can trust something, because there, there have been times in my life where um, the trust was just God. Mm -hmm. the, thing that I, the thing that I knew I could trust was, was just God. Um, and even though those tend to be hard times as well, uh, you have that, right? You have that one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you are able to find other people that you can trust, that helps you, helps you navigate easier because you have people here, um, here on earth that can, um, that you can talk to. Not that you can't talk to God, but that you can interact with. Mm -hmm. And um, so that helps as well, too. But when you trust something, um, it's, it's, again, it's like playing, it's like, uh, playing basketball. You know, and, and one, of the, one of the greatest uh, analogies of trust, at least on the basketball court, uh, is on the defensive end. Because when you play defense, uh, you especially when you're guarding the ball. So you're playing defense, you're guarding the ball. When you guard the ball in defense, you can't see anybody else on the court, especially as a guard. When you're guarding the point guard on defense, everybody else is behind you. Mm -hmm. So you see one player, that's the one you're guarding. You have no idea what's going on. When I have moments where I'm not trusting what's going on behind me, I feel very, very nervous mm. playing defense. Mm -hmm. I feel nervous because I don't know what's going to happen. And I don't know how the play is going to evolve, and I don't think it's going to be good. I have a fear of a uh, negative outcome. When you have the opportunity to play with a group of players where there's great trust, and you know what's going on back there without even seeing it, because you can feel it, you have no fear when you're playing. You have great confidence uh, playing defense and you feel great mm -hmm. about what's about to happen. And uh, so when you have that relationship with God, that's, that's kind of what it's like. For more on other athletes and coaches who compete for Christ, visit us online at sharingthevictory.com.